Hi, welcome to Audiobook Academy. This is a self-paced audiobook. There's no need to keep an eye on things. Just pay attention. Thank you for taking the time to listen. This is a book summary of The 12 Week Year. Get more done in 12 weeks than others do in 12 months. By Brian Moran. In just 12 weeks, what if you could accomplish all of your annual goals? Annual planning is a thing of the past. The 12 week year will transform your work ethic. Individuals and organizations looking to improve their execution effectiveness will find everything they need in this comprehensive how to guide. For the majority of us, planning revolves around the annual cycle. It's true that many goals and plans fall off the table during the course of a year, as we've all experienced ourselves. It's nearly impossible to keep a schedule and stay motivated for a full year. Rather than looking at the year as a whole, this book breaks it down into three months, or 12 weeks. Brian Moran and Michael Lennington have a background in entrepreneurship and consulting, which will help us produce better results. For both of them, coaching is a way to help people and businesses grow. How effective do you think annual goal setting is? For 8 out of 10 people, it's not going to work. While the 12 week year provides clarity and focus on what matters most, it also requires a sense of urgency. So, if you're unable to put your great ideas into action, or if you're a business leader who wants to increase productivity, then you'll want to turn your year on its head and speed up your journey to success. This briefer summary examines why 12 week cycles of goal setting, along with work sprints, are better than traditional annual goal setting methods. To begin our 12 week year, we'll look at some strategies for getting things going. This quote from Henry Ford sums it up perfectly, you cannot build a reputation for yourself on what you intend to do. Action without knowledge is merely a collection of theories. Do you know the percentage of Americans who are either overweight or obese? It's a whopping 65%, which might shock you. Why is this happening? Is it because they don't know how to lead a healthy life that they are overweight? Contrary to popular belief, there is no lack of information about the subject matter. 46,000 books on healthy eating and diet are available. Nearly everyone is aware of the importance of improving one's dietary habits and increasing one's physical activity. A lack of knowledge isn't the issue, the issue is a lack of action. Power comes from what a person does with knowledge, and ideas can only have impact when they are put into action. Continuous execution is the key to realizing our ambitions and unlocking our creative potentials. The key to successful execution is to stop thinking in annual terms and start thinking in terms of periods. When we set annual goals, we're setting ourselves up for complacency. Whereas the 12 week year method helps us to be more consistent in our actions. Periodization is the underlying concept that shifts our time frame so that every week is significant. Throw out the annual plan and divide each year into four sections of 12 weeks as a starting point. How are your New Year's resolutions going? In both our personal and professional lives, we often use an annual attack plan to set our goals. In January, we make New Year's resolutions with the hope of bringing about a desired change by the year's end. We do the same in the workplace. Annual goals and progress reviews are standard operating procedures for businesses. Annual planning, on the other hand, is a roadblock to progress. Annual thinking gives us the impression that we have all the time in the world to accomplish our yearly objectives. Inadequate time management breeds laziness, and as a result, little progress is made. A year's worth of goals can be intimidating, and as a result, we put them off until a later date. This sense of urgency is frequently accompanied by the illusion that we have plenty of time to get things done. According to studies, the final two months of the year account for 40% of total productivity for most businesses. It is important to have an end of the year push because it instills a sense of urgency about achieving performance goals. However, why put off the inevitable? Goals and planning can be broken down into smaller, more manageable chunks to help you stay on top of your game and get things done. The practice of athletes identifying specific skills that could use improvement has been around for a long time. After that, a 12-week cycle is set aside for the purpose of honing and refining these abilities. Athletes think like athletes, and instead of focusing on productivity and skills at the end of each year, we need to constantly reevaluate them. It is possible to find the drive to finish strong four times a year by following a 12-week schedule. During the 12-week cycle, we put ourselves in a position where we have to work even harder. Putting it into practice is more difficult than conceptualizing it, as is the case with most things in life. In order to help us break the year down into 12-week cycles, our authors offer five disciplines that we'll need. We must also hold ourselves to account and act with integrity in order to solidify these principles. The first rule of discipline is to keep your eyes open. A vision that inspires us is the best motivator. A strong sense of direction comes from having a clear picture of where we want to go in the future. 
Long-term aspirations should be balanced with short-term realities when formulating a strategic plan. Focusing on long-term goals is essential to developing a compelling vision zooming out on life and focusing on personal and professional goals are essential. Try to picture yourself 10 years from now. It's important to consider our long-term goals and incorporate them into our overall vision. In order to achieve our goals, we must first establish a strong emotional connection to them. Our vision for the next three years should be the culmination of our long-term plan. As a way to keep us focused on the short-term goals we need to accomplish in the long run, three-year goals are essential. This is the first step in developing a strategy. You must plan your execution in order to succeed. A vision without a plan is a pipe dream, according to our authors. We can structure our lives with a 12-week plan, and we all know that structure is helpful when navigating new territory. Making our lives more manageable is absolutely essential as we are less likely to become overwhelmed when we have a sense of security and stability. Because we can see exactly what we need to accomplish in the next few weeks, short-term plans help us stay on track and focused. Lastly, because of the limited time allotted, we are compelled to make the most of each day, which results in us being more productive and energized. Start by writing down your goals. Next, set deadlines for each task and action that needs to be completed by when. Time management and motivation will benefit from this. Third discipline, keeping a tight rein on the process. Setting up the correct controls is the key to being in command. In the face of adversity, how do you cope? We can regain control when things go awry, according to our authors. It is essential that we have a strategy in place to direct our actions and ensure that we remain on a positive course. There are three aspects of process control that aid us in our pursuit of excellence. Peer support and progress measurements are the third and final components of the weekly plan. Breaking down our 12-week goal into weekly goals is the next step in the process of achieving our goal. Our weekly plan should make it crystal clear which daily activities are required to achieve the desired outcomes and lay the groundwork for future growth. At the start of each week, sit down and plan out your week's activities. At the end of each week, reflect on your accomplishments. When we have a strategic weekly plan, we don't waste time on activities that don't contribute to our overall goal. It also means that we stick to our timetable and deliver on our promises. Seek out the support of your friends if you're still having trouble concentrating and staying on task. Peer support motivates us and holds us to a higher standard. People tend to work harder and produce better results when they are aware that their work will be evaluated by others. The fourth and final rule is to keep score. In God we put our trust, all others must bring evidence. Deming, Edwards Edwards. To stay on track, we must keep track of our progress. If we don't keep track of our progress, we won't know how far we have come. This helps us estimate how long it will take to achieve a goal. When it comes to performing at our best, we also need to assess our performance by evaluating how well we've completed the tasks at hand. Planned action is essential because it saves us valuable resources, such as time or energy. It doesn't matter if our goal is to run a marathon or lose weight, we need to do some research before we begin. The best way to achieve your goals is to learn from those who have gone before you and take notes on their strategies. Achieving our goal will be impossible if certain steps aren't taken. These are referred to as keystone actions. Prior to creating weekly keystone action plans and calculating weekly execution score, it is best to focus on weekly execution score. Proper execution yields positive outcomes. Too many people give up on a good strategy because they don't see results right away. Keep a running tally of how well you're doing, rather than how well you're doing overall. This is a list of keystone actions that may be important to some. 1. It's time to build a sales landing page 2. A marketing video should be posted on social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter. 3. Send a personal message to 5 potential customers. 4. Follow up on last week's actions. You can keep track of how many items you've completed each week and give yourself points based on your results. You'll meet your objective in 12 weeks if your average is at least 85%. Achieving a score of 65% on every test isn't going to help you achieve your 12-week goal. The best course of action is therefore to delegate or work to improve one's procrastination habits. The advantage of 12-week plans is that we don't have to wait until the end of the year to see how we're progressing. As soon as we know how far we are in the process, we'll be able to make the necessary adjustments in the next three months. Then, for the next year, we continue to improve and build on what we've already accomplished. The fifth and final rule is time management. Managing one's time effectively is essential to one's success. There is a constant stream of distractions in our daily lives that keep us from accomplishing our most important goals. After bouncing back and forth between work and distractions, 
workers lose an average of 11 hours of productivity per week. When it comes to staying focused, how can you better organize your time? The takeaway here is to set aside specific amounts of time for various activities. As part of our weekly calendar planning process, we should include strategic, buffer and breakout time slots. Each week, you'll devote three hours to your 12-week plan in strategic blocks. Focus on the most important tasks during this time period. Miscellaneous tasks that slow down or halt workflow can be completed during buffer blocks. Interruptions and wasted time can be alleviated when these activities are combined into a single period of time. Check your email, answer phone calls, meet with your coworkers, etc. during this time slot. Rest periods of three hours allow the mind and spirit the opportunity to rest and recharge. The plan will fail if you don't allow time for rest and relaxation, so schedule in time to go for a walk, watch TV, read a book or hang out with friends. To sum it up, there's no reason to work an eight-hour day, as Tim Ferriss explains in the four-hour work week. Similarly, there's no good reason to stick to an annual plan. Our execution cycle can be speeded up and our output can be increased if we reframe our year as 12 weeks instead of months. We must also take responsibility, take ownership, and devote ourselves to continuous improvement. Accountability is the recognition that we can influence our futures by making the right choices. The problem is that we tend to blame external factors or circumstances when we don't meet our goals. It's time for each of us to take control of our own destiny. What we can control and focus on is the most important. The best advice I can give is to stop whining and change your behavior if you're not getting the results you want. On your path to self-discovery, surround yourself with people who will hold you accountable. In order to achieve exceptional results, one must have a strong desire to succeed. Commitment is a promise we make to ourselves to carry out the actions we are accountable for. Discipline, self-esteem, and self-respect are all built through hard work and dedication to a goal. A strong desire, keystone actions, knowledge of costs, and an emotional off switch can help us maintain a strong sense of commitment to our goals. If so, are you all in? Make the most of every word. Integrity is at stake when one makes a public promise. Trying to do it all would be impossible for us. It's time for us to become more deliberate. Prioritizing and taking small steps toward our goal is when we achieve greatness in our lives. Having a break every three months, which is more manageable than a year, is necessary for our mental health. Begin with a small project. Plan to accomplish all of the things you've always wanted to. Then take a look at your plans for the next three months and see how they stack up. We can't expect it to work unless we put in the effort. The number one thing that you will have to sacrifice in order to be great, achieve what you are capable of, and to execute your plans is your comfort, Moran tells us in his book. So, what are you going to do in the next 90 days? Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Please don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. See you in next audiobook.